end of this program. And of course, the last few years, basically, you've raised concerns about the quality of basketball in the country. Morans continue to shine, but how about the local Premier League? And today, I'm joined by a guest in studio who is going to help break this down for us. So welcome sana katika studio yetu leo hii uh, ili tuweze kupata mjadala Madam Angela Luchira who is the Kenya Basketball Federation Assistant Secretary General. Madam karibu sana. Um, thank you very much um, and I'm really glad to be here. Glad to be here. Let's just start from there. What's the state of basketball in the country? Um, I think for me the, the set of basketball in the country is growing. Um, obviously with growth comes a lot of hitches. There's a lot of hitches here and there. I'm not saying we are perfect. It's a journey and, and being in a journey there's always um, progression. Um, and so what I would like to say is first of all I just want to talk about some of the achievements that we have, we've had as a country in basketball. When you look at it from the um, 3x3, um, the international scene, um, first of all, I would just like to say, you know, um, Kenya is going for the World Cup, nothing that, um, you know, something that people are not talking about right now, but something that is very critical. And I mean, we are really proud to be one of the um, few um, um, teams that have been able to make it to the World Cup. So our under 23 team um, is going to the World Cup. Um, when you look at it in terms of globally, we are number 16. Um, um, in Africa, we are number two, something that people don't talk about, but it's because of the hard work that's been going through um, the process as we've been doing all of the work behind the scenes. Um, looking at 3x3 also, um, we are looking at right now, we're just at the brink of um, qualifying for the Olympics um, for the first time. And so, um, I could say there is growth um, when you look at the game. That's on 3x3. When you look at the Morans, Morans have been performing very well. Um, just the last five years, looking at the growth and them being able to play in the Afro basket for the first time in, you know, in 28 years, which was um, a couple of years ago. Um, we continue to build from there. Um, we had a few hitches um, that saw us not being able to make it to the, um, the, to the World Cup um, that has just ended a month ago, um, but we are, we are hopeful and are looking forward to making sure that the Morans are able to make it to the next level. Um, looking at the Leonesses, and I'm breaking this down, um, you know, to the different national teams that we have, the Leonesses have been performing very well perennially. Um, looking at all, I think this, this year is the first time that the Leonesses have not made it to the Afro Basket, which is the biggest championship in Africa. Um, but from that, um, we took learnings. Um, we're going forward with the learnings that we had during the qualifiers. And I must say that Zone 5 has become one of the most competitive zones um, in Africa right now. Um, FIBA has been talking about it and saying, you know, Zone 5 has become very, very competitive. When you look at the countries in Zone 5, you see that Kenya, Egypt, Rwanda, Uganda, um, and South Sudan are countries that had really, really now um, um, on the, on the, on the top of Africa and and the competition is really getting stiffer so um, going back to the local scene um, just looking at how the game has been um, three areas that we still need to work on um, obviously there's player development but looking at how the league has been structured also um, we really have um, you know the, the league is growing the league is growing we started off with we started off with about 40 teams uh, maybe two years ago we are now at 65 teams that are playing in the league um, 24 teams playing in the Premier League 24 playing in Division one and we have a Division two league which we didn't have a couple of years ago but Madam Angela used let me come in there listening to you you paint a very lofty picture, a league that is well run, everything is in place. But from where we sit here, the most basic of things even in our league is a problem. Simple things like even fixture, that's a challenge. Where is the problem? Yes, um, just talking about fixture, I fully agree. We've had a few challenges with the fixtures and this has mainly be, been coming from um, the, the structure in which our teams 
are set up. Um, when you look at some of the teams, um, we have a number of teams that are universities. We have a number of teams that are also institutional and banks. So what happens is you tend to find that um, um, given that their schedules are different and there's different things happening at the, you know, at the institutions, whether it's the bank, when it's interbanks, whether it's the universities, when they're closing school, um, when they've closed school, you find games keep on being postponed, which is something that should not be the case. But um, Angela, this has taken time. It's not something that began yesterday. For the last three, four seasons, this has been the picture. But as a federation, I would say you failed to address this uh, area. Then two, we're just coming from a court injunction, which probably is due to the fights within the KBF. Maybe you can tackle, uh, respond to this probably. Um, first for the fixture, I'm, 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 I'm giving you, I just want to, I want to go back to the fixture because I want to say that yes, it's been a problem. We're working on it. It's work in progress. Um, but one of the things that we'll have to do is to really also hold the teams accountable and make sure that with the teams and the team managers work together with the teams and the team managers to ensure that the fixtures do not keep changing as they keep changing all of the time. Um, going back to the court injunction, um, interesting topic because that's been one of the hottest things that's been happening um, um, that has happened in the month of September actually. Um, yes, the court injunction was basically to stop basketball activities at the Basketball League. Um, but that was lifted um, immediately, almost a week after it was brought up. Um, the issues that came up was the way in which our um, annual general meeting was held and also the fact that um, a number of the teams have not yet fully complied with the Sports Act uh, as required. Um, now looking at that, um, first of all is to just say that um, the AGM was held as per the Constitution. Um, the, initial, um, the initial notice for the AGM was sent out and as per the Constitution on the 30th of April um, there was no quorum so um, um, you know, the Federation went according to the Constitution to make sure that then there was a notice that was sent out for the next AGM after that, and that AGM came 14 days later, which was on the 14th of May. Um, and after that AGM, you know, um, some of the fans and former players went to court, a, a former player and fan went to court to say that we held the AGM um, in disregard to the Constitution. However, I'll just like to make it clear that yes our constitution says that the AGM needs to be held by the 30th of April of every year. Okay. That was the first AGM that was held mm -hmm. and, and later on because of lack of quorum and which is laid out clearly in the constitution. Um, yeah, probably you thing. can chime in here. Y yes indeed and uh, I had a couple of questions. Number one you mentioned that uh, our competitors in zone five are doing so well and uh, including South Sudan, a team that is growing just from the other day, and they are now competing when maybe we can see even better than us. Uh, it's something to worry about. But talking about the in-house matters, do we have a running secretariat uh, for, for the Federation? Because uh, some of the matters uh, he's raising with us, with you, uh, the question of communication, even of fixtures, do we have, apart from the elected officials, um, secretariat that you can say that every day they are doing their job to make sure, for example, communication is there, so that at least we have a smooth run of activities where even people know. Because, for example, you give an example, an example of a team going to the World Cup. Why are we not aware? Why are people not aware? It's because of questions of communication. Therefore, you ask who is supposed to do what within the Federation. Um, when talking about communication, I, I, I think it's, it's, there's been a bit of a slur um, the last year. Um, but to be honest, I think in the last couple of months or so, it has really, um, it, it's improved significantly. Yes, we do have a secretariat. Um, we could do better. There's a lot of areas that we're looking at um, in terms of making changes, in terms of getting better, in terms of just making sure that we can get our, um, you know, we can get to the next level. Um, and, and like you're saying, I think because of some of the changes that also happened in office after the last elections have caused a bit of 
have caused a bit of um, um, you know, breakdown in communication, but we're beginning to rebuild our databases and beginning to go back to the work that was happening previously. Because um, of time, Angela, probably. Can Zita, Zita you have, have something yeah, I burning? Have something to burning. Okay. Uh, I just want to, Isi has talked about the um, basketball in South Sudan, that they're the first actually in Africa now. Mm -hmm. And as they're looking at the FIFA ranking, maybe in February, I think we are uh, in 97, if I'm not wrong. I think we've dropped 97 in yes. FIFA ranking. Mm -hmm. So I just want to know how you're going to make the team grow because we have uh, uh, the youth, how w the plans you have for the youth because if, uh, the youth because we only have one private um, facilitation that uh, is now growing the basketball team in the youth, you know, the way Twende talked about it. Mm -hmm. And then something else, and I want to know the sponsorship. Can you give? Can you have something that the players are fighting for? Because in the in the basketball, we don't have any sponsorship mm -hmm. in the basketball. Yeah, and right. my last mm -hmm. um, my last one is uh, is the changing of fixtures. Like uh, team can wake up today, mambi wa mulikom na chaza home. The next day, mambi wa ah mna fakwenda na ibasha. And mind you, maybe those teams that when you endo na jili pay transport because and they have to pay fee so that they can join what they what the league at the end of it. So why? Uh, I just I, I know I've asked a lot of questions. I just want you to break it down for everyone. Like how are the players going to re, to do what to benefit from the basketball? Okay, Angela, maybe in one minute you can compress it. Um, first of all, in terms of um, building, building, I'll just I'll, I'll just say something real quick. Um, we started an under-16 league, and the the reason we started an under-16 league is really to be able to build up the. the you know, the capacity and the skill level of our players so that we are building into the future. That's the first thing. The second thing that, um, um, that Zita has asked about the fixtures, like I said before, it's about us working together collaboratively um, with all the teams. The reason the fixtures keep changing is really because of the request of the teams that come through. And sometimes for us, it's been a catch-22. And right now we are saying, you know what, um, we've got to start cracking the whip on teams and giving more covers because that's the only way that we're going to stop the habit, the habit of changing, perennial habit of I, I need my game changed because my player is not available because this is happening. And Angela, is happening. because of time, can you yeah. give us a commitment? Can you give the public a commitment live on this TV? How soon are you going to roll out this? In terms of the fixture changes? Yes, that mess. So How long is it going to take you to address? Um, I can say that in the next one month, the fixture issue is going to go away. Okay, one month. That's quite long. Shitera, maybe mm -hmm. do you have a question for her? Uh, probably all the questions have been asked by uh, colleagues here. But again, just like football, basketball is facing the same problems. Mm -hmm. I used to enjoy basketball in the early 2000s when I was a high school student. Uh, and. Um, I, I envy or I, I na, na tamani zile siku za basketball, KPA, hmm. ikicheza against KCB, cooperative bank, wakati wakina Cliff or the current uh, hmm. coach who, is, who was playing for cooperative bank then. We used to fill Nyayo National Stadium gymnasium. Hmm. Uh, the, the, the days are long gone, so probably, as, as Zita put it, uh, Madame Angela probably, what strategies are you putting on the table to ensure that these uh, games are back to, they are attractive the way, you imagine a basketball game at 9 p.m. but the gymnasium is full. The, 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 the strategies you are putting on the table, marketing strategies, uh, the, the league used to have sponsors, they are no longer there. Probably the structures and strategies you are putting in place to ensure that uh, the confidence is back. I think, first of all, uh, I don't know the last time you were in Nyayo Stadium um, to watch a game. Um, you should have been there then yesterday. The gym was pretty full until 9 o'clock. Um, we have brought back um, games, Friday night games, um, Saturday and Sunday games, um, going up till late. And the reason we've done that is because we also realized, you know, like everybody says, sports is not about just the game. It's also about the entertainment that's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things that we're trying to bring back. Um, if you look at our playoffs that ended for the last season, that ended just um, around June, 
um, we had filled up the gym completely, totally. And reason being, we brought back the night games, we brought back the music, we brought back the refreshments. Um, those refreshments, those also, you know, refreshments, food, and all of that. Um, when you start doing that, um, the fans keep coming back. We're encouraging teams also to create their fan bases because a fan base is not necessarily created by the federation. It's created by the teams mm -hmm. and the players. When the teams and the players start creating fan bases and start communicating about their games, mm -hmm. that way they bring their fans to the gym and we can then take the opportunity to be able to build on that. Um, so that's, those are some of the things we're looking at. Over and above that is now to get back into doing a lot of PR about the games, um, communicating more. Uh, like I said, it's, yes, I know there's been a bit of a slur, but now we're looking at how we can be able to build it back and get it to be um, top notch. Yes, that's Angela Lichira from the Basketball Federation of Kenya. We'll be putting you to account with all the promises you've made to the citizenry, to the viewer this morning. And we hope uh, the basic of things will improve. So thank you very much for making time for Sporty Monday, Angela. And now over to Europe. Oh my. Not so good news for the Red Devils, but one man, Onana, era a 